Hi, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you. The subject of today's video is a disease that ravages much of South America and Sub-Saharan Africa. Like many of the diseases we have covered on this channel, it is spread by mosquitoes. And despite a vaccine being available, there are as many as 200,000 cases each year, leading to at least 30,000 people dying every year. In today's video, we will cover the symptoms, treatments and history of yellow fever, so named for the jaundiced skin and the yellowed eyes it causes. Yellow fever is a hemorrhagic fever, meaning that it causes blood loss from multiple orifices in patients. The disease is caused by an infection from a virus of the Flav viridae family, a type of single-strand RNA virus. The virus is typically found in forest monkeys, but is spread to humans through mosquito bites. In Africa, it is the mosquito species Aedes aegypti that spreads the disease, whilst in South America, it is the Haemagoga species. A mosquito taking blood from an infected monkey can then go on to take blood from an uninfected human. An infected human, if bitten by an uninfected mosquito, can then allow for the disease to spread even further. Once infected, the virus will begin to replicate in a patient's dendritic cells, a type of cell of the mammalian immune system. The virus will eventually spread to the patient's lymph nodes, and from there will be seeded into other organs. In particular, the liver, kidney and spleen will be affected as the virus replicates rapidly. The infection can be broken down into three stages. The first stage is known as the period of infection and lasts between the third and sixth day after the bite. The initial symptoms will present as a fever. There will be a feeling of general discomfort and an aching body. Headaches, dizziness and sensitivity to light are also common. So too is anorexia, nausea and vomiting. One telltale symptom is a reddened conjunctiva, as this is a sign of what more serious symptoms might await the patient. But before this, the patient will experience the second stage of the infection, the remission period. Over the course of up to 48 hours, the symptoms experienced in the first stage will begin to abate. For the vast majority of patients, this will be the end of the yellow fever infection. For those who only reach the second stage, they will develop an immunity for life and likely no long-term damage to their organs. But around 15% of patients will unfortunately go on to the third stage of infection, known as the period of intoxication. The symptoms experienced in the first stage will return, but will be more severe as the virus replicates in the major organs. As the liver, spleen and kidneys are drowned in the virus, patients will begin to experience kidney failure and damage to the liver. There will be a reduced urine output with dark coloured urine. The patient will then begin to vomit what looks like coffee grounds. This is usually a sign of internal bleeding. Hemorrhaging will also be present, with blood coming from the patient's eyes, nose, mouth and stomach. But perhaps the most notable symptom relates to how the disease earned its name. Because of the damage done to the liver, a patient is left jaundiced with discoloured yellow skin. The whites of a patient's eyes become yellow, again caused by the jaundice. Due to the damage to the organs, damage to the circulatory system or blood loss, as many as 50% of those who reach the third stage will die. As for treatment, there is no specific action to deal with the disease. All that can be done is supportive care, usually in the form of intensive care. The patient will also need to manage any bleeds, as yellow fever reduces the blood's ability to coagulate. Dialysis and treatment of the hypertension caused will also be vital to ensure survival. So too, will be ensuring the patient has proper nutrition whilst the body fights the virus and tries to recover. Ultimately, the disease is entirely preventable as there is the yellow fever 17D vaccine, which uses a weakened live form of the virus. In addition, methods of controlling mosquitoes will help reduce the spread of infection. As for the history of the disease, there have been Aedes aegypti mosquitoes for at least the last 17,000 years. The mosquitoes are drawn to the still waters stored by humans, and they have long favoured human settlements as breeding and feeding grounds. From the 16th century onwards, the Atlantic slave trade offered these mosquitoes passage to the Americas, bringing with them the yellow fever virus. 
With this, it spread to the New World, and the mosquitoes even ended up in South European ports. There have been notable outbreaks of the disease, including the epidemic of 1733 in Philadelphia, the then capital of the United States. In a city of 50,000 people, and between only August and November, as many as 5,000 people died of yellow fever. Despite being present for much of human history, it was not until the late 19th century that efforts were made to understand the disease. It was thought that the miasma theory could explain the transmission of the disease. The miasma theory is the belief that foul odours entering the body causes illness. Some speculated that the disease could be spread by bad blood or by parasites. One notable proponent of this idea was Josiah Knott, an American surgeon, who believed that yellow fever was caused by parasites, though he stopped short of identifying mosquitoes as the vector. A Cuban doctor by the name of Carlos Finlay is credited with confirming the idea that mosquitoes transmitted the disease. Carlos had long believed that mosquitoes transmitted the disease from an infected person to a healthy person. He gathered volunteers who were deliberately infected with yellow fever. He gathered some mosquitoes and had them bite people who were suffering with yellow fever. The mosquitoes were then taken and were in turn made to bite the healthy people. Of the five people bitten, one developed yellow fever. Further tests seemingly confirmed his initial hypothesis, though the results were mixed. His observations proved a link between mosquitoes and yellow fever. However, he also discovered something else. Carlos noted that mosquitoes could be used to inoculate people from suffering with harsher cases of the disease. In 1900, the American army stepped in and was overseen by Dr. Walter Reed. The medical commission headed by Reed carried out tests on themselves as to whether mosquitoes transmitted yellow fever. It marked an improvement on practices at the time. Consent was obtained from volunteers to be experimented upon, with somewhat informed written consent obtained. Some people from the military volunteered to aid in combating the disease. They even refused the financial incentive, merely just wanting to do their part to get rid of it once and for all. Between destroying mosquito breeding sites, fumigation, and even martial law, yellow fever was eliminated in Cuba. This was then replicated in the rest of the Caribbean and in North America. In 1927, scientists were able to isolate a strain of the yellow fever virus. The efforts to create the vaccine were led by the South African virologist Max Thriller. Max and his team were able to weaken the live virus. Using tissues from mice embryos and cultures from chicken eggs, the vaccine was deemed complete in 1937. The remains of the vaccine are still used to this day. This is due to it offering complete immunity for 90% of those who take the vaccine within 30 days of inoculation. In recognition for the work, Max was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1951. For some parts of the developing world, yellow fever remains a constant threat. The Eliminate Yellow Fever Epidemic Strategy, otherwise known as I, is a major effort to eliminate massive outbreaks of the disease, focusing on eliminating urban and international spread. It aims to end two epidemics by 2026 by ensuring that affordable vaccines are available, continuing research and development for better tools and practices. It is thought that around 1 billion people will be vaccinated by the end of 2026. Yellow fever will hopefully be a disease capable of being eliminated as a major threat in the next few years. Like many of the diseases we have covered, access to medical infrastructure to help patients experiencing the toxic stage is incredibly vital. And again, we can point the finger to the mosquito for being the vector of a truly disturbing disease. There are promising signs, and one hopes that soon enough, the threat posed by this disease will be a thing of the past.